Hey everybody, thank you so, so much for tuning in. So today is part two of my Michaels transformation video. So if you didn't watch part one, I basically took one of the items that I received in my Michaels grab bag and I transformed it into something that was more me. And today I'm transforming three more items. One of them was kind of a fail, but still ended up looking really cool. And I really hope that you enjoy this video and you stick around by subscribing to this channel because once you hit that subscribe button, we instantly become best friends. Did we just become best friends? Yep. And please go ahead and hit that notification bell so you know every time I post a video. Let me know in the comments below if you wanna see more before and after and transformation videos. And let's go ahead and get started. The first things I wanted to make over are these adorable signs that I got in my Michaels grab bags. Even though they are super cute, I really don't have a place for them and they're just not really my style right now. So I decided to remove the price stickers and they did leave some residue so I used some Goo Gone to remove the adhesive. So I let it sit and then I buffed it out. I was really trying to use the original color of that back frame but it did leave a weird mark. After I use the Goo Gone, I do use some multi-surface cleaner just to remove all of the oil that the Goo Gone leaves behind. And this is just going to help the paint stick better because if you leave the oil on, spray paint usually doesn't really stick well. Now I was going to use regular chalk paint for this, but I found a really, really good chalk spray paint that I really wanted to try. So I'm going to paint just the top of these signs, or the bottom actually. So this is a chalk paint. I got this at Walmart and now I'm just going to go ahead and spray paint on my surface first and then on the project. Now this is going to take a few coats so be patient. It's going to look patchy at first but I just took my time with this and I let it dry really really well. And once it was dry, I had this really beautiful, even color. So now I am going to make this into a little tray and I'm using this little candle holder. I got this at Michael's with a coupon. So the original price is $3.79 and then I used a 50% off. Now I'm gonna use my glue gun for this. You can use E6000, but I wasn't really sure if I was gonna keep it this way or stain it. So I just used my handy dandy glue gun. And honestly, this is so cute. I made sure my top sign was nice and aligned and I went from having two signs that I had no use for to an adorable display tray that is nice for every season. The next thing I received in my grab bag was this floral arrangement and as you can tell it's pretty pricey but I just don't really love it. I think that the flowers being so high up was a little awkward and the picture itself was already buffed I guess by someone else or maybe it was scraped up. So I really didn't like the faux galvanized look of it, to be honest with you. If you continue buffing, you will see a green shade on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove those flowers. I do like the flowers, I just don't like that they are high up. So I pulled and there was a ton of foam. So I grabbed an X-Acto knife to try and loosen it up and nothing really happened. And I just went to town with a spoon. I did have to break this up into different chunks. So if you're doing this at home, make sure that you have a vacuum cleaner handy or a little dustpan because this stuff got everywhere. When I finally got everything out, I did a happy dance because this took a really long time. Thank goodness for editing. Now, if you want to save the flowers, then just use some side cutters or some pliers and clip them. I was going to make this over and use the same flowers, but to be honest with you, uh, I, I figured I'd go a completely different route, even though those are really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and spray paint it. Now at first I'm just priming it because I was going to do an enamel look. And I've done a lot of enamel on my channel. So I figured I would use this beautiful color and make it a little different. So I love, love, love this color. I actually bought it for a Playhouse makeover and decided why not use it. I didn't need it for a very big space. So here it is, and I'm going to do the same thing that I do when I'm doing enamel stuff. I'm going to grab the shade Nutmeg Brown, and with a foam brush, I'm just going to drag that across all of the edges. Instead of making it look like enamel, I want it to make it look like it's rusting. So technically still enamel, but more of just the rust color. Now normally I would use cinnamon for rust, 
but I really liked how this brown and the green looked together. So I just ran this across all of the edges and my brush is actually pretty dry in some areas. And you'll see down here, I wasn't neat at all. I wanted it to look messy because rust isn't exactly a neat thing. I did take my finger and buff it in there in some places. And at this point, this eye was the messiest because I wanted this to look like it was just rusting and ready to go. So once I completed that, I let it dry and all of the flowers that I received in my grab bag, I decided to use the yellow and orange ones again. Now I am removing some of the green because that's another thing that I thought was really awkward about the previous arrangement, all of the green that was high up. And then I'm combining some of the orange and some of the little sprigs. I don't know the name of these bouquets, but once I was done, I had this beautiful arrangement. So I went from this arrangement that I didn't exactly love to this one, which I am completely obsessed with. I think it is so gorgeous and you can switch out the flowers. My next DIY is with this beautiful U letter. I love, love, love the detail in this. Now at first I was trying to use this as a horseshoe. I was trying to use it as an entrance. Nothing was really working out. And look at the details in this, it's so gorgeous. So I had the horrible idea of cutting this up into strips. Now I have gloves on that are not meant for this project and I grabbed some tin snips and I went to town. I started cutting these up into strips, which weren't very straight strips by the way. And you'll see what I made with this. Now, I'm gonna be completely honest with you, I do not recommend this. If you got this in your grab bag and it doesn't fit your decor, then donate it, let somebody else love it. And the reason I'm saying that is because what I'm gonna do with it, you can do with something you can buy in the store without the headache. Now, it looks really easy right now because I'm editing, of course, but this is actually really, really sharp. I'm taking a hammer to this to straighten it out and to kind of get rid of the sharp edges. I also took my little sanding sponge and did the same thing to the edges to make sure that I, you know, don't get cut. And now I'm just going to continue to cut strips and get the most out of this. This took a really long time, but like I said, thank goodness for editing <laughs> and the gloves kept getting caught. I just figured I'd be honest and not make it sound like this was the easiest thing in the world to do. This was something that popped up in my head and it was a better idea in my head than when I actually started to do it. So as you see, that one just flew across the room. And now that I have a ton of strips, I decided that I would put this on a pumpkin. This is a pumpkin that I made over using Dollar Tree stuff. So with a little foam cutter, I made little holes into this. I'll put the original video below because I also made Delf pumpkins and now I painted it tropic orange. In the original pumpkin tutorial, I filled the middle with Dollar Tree twinkle lights. However, that's not really necessary. You're not gonna be able to open it and close it. And for the stem, I used air dry modeling clay, rolled it out into a cigar shape that was a little thinner in the end, and made indentations using a popsicle stick just for some more dimensions and rolled it up. Like I said, this is a previous tutorial. I am using an old pumpkin, so I'll link that below if you wanna see the rest. If not, that's cool too. I decided to <laughs> go ahead and use those strips and stab the top of the pumpkin and then the bottom. I probably should have been wearing gloves for this because this is still really sharp, which is why I'm being completely honest and saying I don't really recommend this. But I didn't want to edit out the fact that this was a difficult DIY and I really, really did try and think outside the box for this. Like I said, it was a little better in my head than when I actually tried to execute it. And even though I still think it looks really cool, I wouldn't tell somebody who's not an avid crafter to try this at home. As you can see, there's still pieces sticking out, which I'm trying to cover up. And metal ribbon is super cheap at Joanne Fabric and everywhere else. So now I grabbed some hot glue and added that cute little stem. And I think I had something really cool. Do I recommend you doing it at home? No, but I think it's cool that it went from this 
to this. So I really hope that you enjoyed these transformations. And if you did, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. I appreciate you so much. And I will hopefully see you on the next one.